I'm sure sources like I'm going to make today are going to be outlawed at some point because this is going to be dangerous. So join me while we use some of my super hots from this year. We're going to be combining a few interesting peppers to create a killer hot hot sauce. So let's have a look at the peppers we are going to be using today. These are the fresh ones that I have. Um, I am going to be adding in some frozen ones, not a lot, but you'll see why in a second. So these are my fresh ones. Most of these are seven pot habaneros and my goodness, they are hot. They are seriously hot. So we've got quite a few of the seven pot habaneros. Most of the red ones here are seven pot habaneros. Then we have some Naga Brain chocolates. The only reason they're all opened up like that is because I was gathering the seeds. Uh, there really weren't a lot of seeds in here anyway. But these here are Naga Brain chocolates. The smooth skin brown ones are Trinidad Douglas, and I have a few of them, not a lot, but it'll, I think, just add a nice little bit of richness in the color. So we have a few of those, and those, again, are seriously hot. So this here is Habanero the Monster. That's what I was growing last year. It's another one of my frozen peppers. I have defrosted them. And then let's move on here. So here are a few more Naga Brain chocolates. Again, these are from last year. I froze them. I didn't actually get around to using them, but we have some over there. And then the killer. <laughs> These are my Carolina Reapers from last year. I've made some seriously hot sauces. I've made some ridiculously hot sauces and I've done it on this channel and you've seen some of them and believe me, they burn. Nothing like the Carolina Reaper though. These are nuts. I have had the seven pot Primo. Pretty sure that they are on the same sort of level as these, but these ones here are very, very dangerous. So these are the peppers we're gonna be using. I've just weighed them out. We have about 400 grams, but I'm gonna weigh them again once I've destalked them, so taken the stalks off. So let me just get around to doing that and we'll carry on with the rest of this process. These are burning my nose just like this. I haven't even done anything with them yet and they're burning my nose. Oh, it's very fruity, very intense smells here. Uh, if you've never had a super hot pepper, it is a bit of an experience. I, I can't say I'd recommend it, but it is an experience. You've got to try it at least once. So like I said, I am using some frozen peppers in here as well. Uh, obviously, I've defrosted them, so they're not frozen anymore. But frozen peppers on their own, you can't really ferment. You're not going to have much luck with it. Uh, you probably could do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would suggest adding in a lot of fresh peppers. I like to do at least a 50% uh, frozen or smoked to 50% fresh. That makes sure that you get a good amount of lactobacillus. So the peppers, when you freeze them, you can freeze peppers and use them. I could use this in a meal and you still have the heat and the flavor, but they do get a bit squishy. Um, but, but with the fermentation, you're going to be blending it up anyway at the end. So I'm not too worried about that. But just keep that in mind. If you do have an abundance of peppers and you need to figure out <laughs> what you need to do with them, just put them in the freezer and you can use them in your meals through the year. Now the Carolina Reapers. Apparently uh, Carolina Reapers are a good tasting pepper. I wouldn't really know because <laughs> every time I've had one with a sauce or anything, it's just the heat that gets you and <laughs> your taste buds your taste buds take a vacation. Oh, the smells here, wow. I wonder what pepper spray, what the Scoville is of pepper spray. I'm guessing it can't be too far off what this is gonna be. So there we go, we have taken all the stalks off these peppers. So this fermentation, I'm not gonna be doing a mash, this will be just uh, a fermentation with brine. So all I need to do is cut up these peppers into halves or quarters. This is the jar that I'm gonna be using, it's one that I've made. Uh, have a look at the video, I'll put a link up here where you can see how I make these and show you how to make your own. And we're gonna put the peppers straight in there once we've cut them up. The reason you're cutting them open Obviously it helps get more surface area for the fermentation to happen, 
but also these are hollow inside so they'll just float up to the top if you don't cut them open. There we go. So to keep this all submerged, what we're gonna be using is a marrow. Now, normally I don't worry about it too much being submerged, but it does make life a bit easier if you can keep it all underneath the brine. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something like this. Sometimes I use an onion, uh, like a layer of onion and push it down. You might've seen that in my previous videos, but this is quite a wide mouth jar as you can see. So an onion, you'd have to have a big old onion to be able to do that. So what I need to do, I need to cut this so it fits inside so there we go and this will just weigh down on it and the brine will stay below the surface so talking of brine let's make our brine so i'm going to make up some brine in here so we go just over a liter of water and we're going to be doing a two to three percent brine There we go, we just need to pour that in here and cover the peppers over. Okay, let's see. So there we go. Now what I'm gonna do, cause I want this, I'm, I want the lid to basically, so this is a spare lid I have, but the lid is basically gonna push everything down as much as it can. Um, but what I need is, I need a bit of a gap here so that the airlock can go in and not be impeded. So we're just gonna make a bit of a, a hole. There we go. I'm never really too concerned about things coming above the brine level, but it is better to have them under. You don't have to then pay too much attention to it. So all we need to do now is put the airlock in. So I need to give that a quick clean. And that goes into the top there. That there is gonna go into the Ferminator now and we'll check back on it in about three weeks time when we'll be ready to make the sauce. I am really nervous about today. This is going to be insanely hot. It's, it's hotter I think than anything I've made before. Yesterday I had a bit of a sneak peek because I was making a video about you know, whether your fermentation is safe or not. So looking at if there's any growth on the top, any of the white bits and things like that. I'll link to it up here. I opened up this jar to show what was going on inside. And as I cracked it open, I didn't even take the lid off. The heat and the spices and the aroma just hit me full on. And it was, it was insane. So enough delay. Let's get started with making this into a sauce. Don't mess about with, with peppers like this. Don't take chances. Wear gloves if you're making this sauce. Uh, try and have some ventilation. Unfortunately, I can't turn on my ventilation because you will just hear that and you won't hear me. But it will be turned on as soon as I've finished this video. I really like these gloves here. Um, they're nitrile based and they don't have any of the powder or anything on there. So it's not gonna affect anything if I do touch the sauce. Um, I'll link below where I got them from. So let's open this up. <sighs> okay, so if you have watched the video about the safety of your sauce, you'll know that I took the top, oh, smell already. Um, I took the courgette that I had put inside there or the marrow that I'd put inside to keep things down. I'd taken it out and we can see inside that is looking beautiful. The smells are incredible. It's looking really good. Um, we can see the bit of white at the bottom and that's perfectly normal. Let's just pour that in. I'm trying to stay back because <laughs> the fumes are, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the fumes are pretty strong. Seriously, it's strong. I'm not making this up. This is, it's going to make my eyes water in a second. Probably shouldn't have worn contact lenses today. I'm just going to be putting all the peppers into this, uh, this blender jug. I'm just going to use a spoon to start it off. Okay. 
Now, I've I, I got to be fair here. This actually smells really good as well. Um, I know if you're not a if you're not a hot sauce fan, you'd be wondering what the hell am I doing? Why am I going through this? Why am I making such a painful sauce? Well, there's a couple of reasons. This is going to taste really good. Um, some of the peppers that I have in here are real classics in terms of flavor and obviously heat. But the reason we make hot sauce is it just it gives us a buzz. It's just so good on food. It's it's healthy for you as well. You might not think it because of the pain you go through, but it is actually quite healthy for you. And the flavors that I'm smelling here actually are really good. Once you once you get past the uh, the heat blasting you in the face, this is a relatively short fermentation. It's around about two weeks, but even so, I'm quite interested to see what the pH level of this is, and I'll test it once we've blended this up. Let's get this out the way as well. Make some space. And let's get this blended. Well, the colors look amazing. Um, it's lovely bright red, dark orange, beautiful looking sauce. You've got a couple choices as always when you do this. You can either have it as is, which is going to be quite lumpy and there's going to be some seeds and stuff in there. Or we can do what I'm going to do here, which is pour it through the sieve. Very tempted to taste it, but we'll leave that to the end. <laughs> oh, every time. <clears throat> so let's just pour this in here and sieve it through. That looks pretty awesome, actually. If it wasn't as hot as it is, you would think that's just a lovely tomato paste or something. One of my subscribers suggested getting one of these things uh, just to scrape out the stuff from the thing. So I'm going to give it a try. I think I need a bigger one than this, but I can see the benefits. There we go, I think we've got most of it out there. Now we just need to scrape it through. I'm going to do something a little different with this hot sauce. The point obviously is to make a really hot hot sauce. So I want to keep the heat. I don't want to dilute it down with any vinegar. I'm going to add about 200 milliliters of brine into this. I'm doing this because I want it to go a little bit further and also it's quite thick. It's like a ketchup consistency. Yeah, I want it to be a little bit more pourable than that. I might actually add a little bit more of the brine. Another 100 milliliters. I think our hot sauce is done. There we go. We still have that great color and it's getting closer to that time where I have to taste this. But Let's get bottling now. So let's see how much we have here. I've got eight bottles ready. I don't know if it'll fill all eight. Oh, the fumes. It's actually steaming. <laughs> I think it's just because it's really cold in here and blending it up probably heats it up a little bit. Jeez. Uh, <coughs> oh, <coughs> Wow. Okay. That's a good consistency. I like that. So let's test the pH level of the source pH meter here. I have calibrated it and let's give it a test. Still settling down. It's at 4.4 at the moment. There we go. So it's settled at 4.4. Don't know if you can make that out on the screen. 4.4, very happy with that. Anything below 4.6 and you're doing well. This is obviously a shorter fermentation than I would normally do, but I'm happy with 4.4. I think that is spot on.
So enough delaying. It's time for me to taste this. Um, I haven't had food yet today, so I got to be careful a little bit here. I'm not going to have a whole lot, but I wouldn't have a whole lot anyway because I don't want to kill my taste buds for the next few hours. You can tell me I'm not brave in the comments. That's fine. I don't care because I'm not putting more than that in my mouth. Jeez. <clears throat> my mouth hates me. Um, the flavor is actually really good. The burn is, it's a lot. It's the tongue, it's the lips, it's... <sighs> uh, yeah, it's everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't have had more than that in, in one go because I think my guts would hate me later on. But that is, <laughs> that's got to be the hottest, oh, it's got to be the hottest sauce that I've ever made, most definitely. That is, that is hotter than, that is hotter than the seven pot brain strain yellow <clears throat> uh, video that I, <clears throat> I'm battling to think right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I should just end the video now. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please subscribe. There's going to be more coming in the future. I can't control my saliva glands. Thank you again, and we'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye for now. Oh, my God.